today, we're gonna take another look at the D-Shroud mod, but this time with a top-down Noctua C14S and the Cooler Master NR200. I'll show you how to get it working optimally with a D-Shrouded AIB card. Hint, we're going to be packing the C14S up, sort of. Hey there, and welcome back to Machines and More. I wanted to follow up on the last video related to deshrouding the Ventus 3080 AIB card with a quick part two. If you saw part one, then you saw how incredible the deshroud mod was, especially with the tempered glass panel and the Scythe Fuma 2 tower cooler. The tempered glass panel really helps the case as a whole funnel that hot air out of the system and that bottom to top airflow orientation. And while the Noctua C14S is great, I wouldn't recommend it to be used with the tempered glass panel. It's simple physics since it needs a source of cool air for the fan and the glass panel limits it. With that in mind, let's look at the best setup for prioritizing CPU thermals with the C14S in conjunction with an AIB3080 card today. In addition, I'll also dedicate a little bit more time to undervolting this time. To get a baseline, let's compare against the unmodded card. For all tests with the C14S, uh, the two CPU cooling fans are locked at 80%. Uh, the surprising finding here is that instead of working really well for the C14S, it actually just results in a rebalancing of combined CPU and GPU thermals. Not that CPU or GPU thermals are really additive or tradable one to one, but I did find it kind of entertaining that the combined numbers added up to exactly the same. Well, that means the D-Shroud mod is a bust, right? Let's see why. The GPU temps come in lower, but all that heat just ends up getting transferred to the CPU through the heatsink. I studied why this was, and when I looked at it carefully, it's because of the placement of the C14S's heatsink. When the card is stock, even with some slim fans, the hot air is squeezing around the card fairly evenly. And when the card is deshrouded, that exhaust air pattern is moved to the edges of the 120 millimeter fans, which moves the hot air directly through the C14S since all of that heatsink mass overhangs into the path of the rear side 120 millimeter fan. We saw a modest increase in the CPU thermals for the FUMA 2, but it wasn't as pronounced because tower coolers don't have all their heatsink mass against the side panel. Not content with this, so I pulled out a piece of packing tape and covered the exposed bottom end of the C14S, thus preventing the hot air from getting channeled into the heatsink. Yeah, that packed up C14S may look a little janky, but wow, this might be the closest you could get to a free lunch. Of course, yeah, you could 3D print a bracket and put it around there, but you know, this is just a proof of concept. The tape prevents the heatsink from receiving the redirected GPU exhaust and forces the hot air around the heatsink. Now, I wouldn't take too much stock in the improved GPU uh, thermals, or you'll see later on, and when I downclock the CPU, it increases slightly, but this is all within the margin of error. And before you go putting packing tape on your C14S, I did some benchmarking with a regular GPU cooler and found no significant difference. It will only matter when you're doing something like a D-Shroud mod with a GPU which actively pushes GPU exhaust into that outermost region of your case. So yeah, those gains are significant for the CPU. For a quick comparison, I downclocked to 4.1 gigahertz to compare against the FUMA 2 with the D-Shroud mod. It wasn't quite apples to apples since I had to drop the bottom fans to 1500 RPM to noise normalize. In the testing with the FUMA 2, the NFA 12s running at 1500 RPM yielded a little higher GPU thermals, so not quite apples to apples since the FUMA 2's max fan RPM of 1200 meant I really needed to push the bottom fans hard to get to the same noise levels for even comparisons. The A14 fan makes the noise levels harder to equalize between these two configurations since it is a louder fan and it's directly mounted on the outside panel so it does trigger a decibel meter a lot more than the fans inside the case would. But this is all just one aspect of measurement error. Now technically you could also drop the CPU fan speeds a little bit to bump up the bottom fans but those are all the adjustments that you could make on this curve to suit your preference and how you balance GPU to CPU thermals. I do think though, the C14S, even with its deficiency in D-Shroud mod, compares favorably. You might recall that I touched on undervolting very, very briefly in the first D-Shroud video. And my apologies, I don't know if it was the older drivers at the time or just that I, that I didn't fine tune it enough, but I could not for the life of me get the undervolt 
working properly without Unigen being adversely impacted and it was only undervoltable to the point where a degree or so of thermal improvement was gained. Now I tried it again on the newer 456.71 drivers and things are looking a lot better now for whatever reason. For those of you that aren't familiar with the technique, I'll touch on it briefly. So you'll want to run a continuous benchmarking loop in the background such as Unigen Heaven 4.0. And then you can open up MSI Afterburner and just eyeball the core frequency that the GPU is boosting to. Now, don't take the number right away since you'll need to let the GPU warm up for 10 minutes or so before you can pick the core frequency constant. You can also go with a monitoring software like Hardware Info or Open Hardware Monitor. And you could also log the data so you can average that out technically, but that's not required. Here, you can kind of see that it's settling in at around 1890 megahertz uh, or so. So that's a good place to start for most 3080s. Hit Control F to open up the voltage chart and look for the number on the graph, 1890, and note the voltage. So here it's 1037 millivolts. As a starting place, find the point on your frequency axis that co corresponds to 100 megahertz less than the core frequency you chose earlier. In this case, we'll go to the closest point at 1785 megahertz and note that the voltage here is 937 millivolts. So we're now going to tell the GPU to run at 100 megahertz higher or so at 935 millivolts. In other words, we want it to boost to the same common frequency of 1890 megahertz, but now at 100 millivolts less. Hit Alt, click that point and drag the curve to minus 100. You can also use the core frequency slider in the main afterburner window to bring things down minus 100 megahertz. Then go to that 937 millivolt point and send it back up to the target frequency here, 1890 megahertz. You should also adjust the rightmost point to bring it up to the same target frequency. So click the check mark in the main window and check it again. It's a little finicky sometimes. So you'll just adjust that 937 millivolt point back up to the target frequency and hit check again. Now, if it looks good, click save and select a save slot. And that's it. You just undervolted. Now, before you run back to Red Dead Redemption 2, you'll need to make sure that Unigen 4.0 is still running stable without any stuttering or artifacting. If it looks okay, you could keep trying to go lower or go ahead and try a few games to see if it's stable. If it's not and you get crashes, I'd add back voltage slowly. In other words, you might have to go back to that 947 millivolts points uh, and 1890 megahertz and increment it back slowly if you've gone too far. However, in general with the 3080s I've tried, 100 millivolts seems to be a fairly good undervolt starting point. You can also look, take a look at your power savings in a hardware monitor. If you observe the GPU power before applying the undervolt, it's at about 317 watts. After applying the undervolt, you're now running at about 270 watts. Now, 40 watts isn't a huge savings. I mean, if you gained eight hours a day, every day, for a whole year, you're probably saving about $15 to $25, depending on your utility rates. But the bigger difference here is the thermal savings. Less power equals less heat in your system. After applying the undervolt, the savings are pretty great. Less impact the CPU cooler, lower GPU thermals, and this will apply equally well to whatever CPU cooling you're using. So whether you have the C14S or a tower cooler, this is a good way to maximize your performance without too much penalty. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks a lot for joining me here. If you found the content helpful, please subscribe since it really helps the channel grow. Have fun and game on.